15 degrees, you can see your breath. Out here in the lake of fat. Breaking tables like it's poetry. Where else would you rather be? Pinto Ron Elvis in the Le Poncho. Remembers that you need to know. Cause once you out here now, your family. Where else would you rather be? Where else would you rather be? Welcome into the Nickel City Crew. I am your host, Rob Crippen. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Nickel City Crew. This episode, along with all of our episodes, are presented by Crippen Legacy Entertainment here on Spreaker and StreamYard. We're so glad that you're joining us for some of your Buffalo Bills and NFL content again today. And as always, these are my Bills thoughts said out loud. It's a vibe so ridiculous. Since Troy plus 83 was sick. The shout rocking like a symphony. Where else would you like to be? All right, let's get straight to it. Really, really excited about tonight's episode as we really, we approach the regular season. It's going to be here before you know it, Bill's Mafia, Nickel City Crew. Um, you know, one of the main things that, you know, really has led to the ascension of the Buffalo Bills and the current iteration that we know is QB1, number 17, Josh Allen. So let's let's talk about Josh tonight. Let's dig into it a little bit. Joining me tonight, as always, my co-host, Riding Shotgun. Adam Dump Truck Rupsick. Holla at him on Instagram and Twitter at Adam Rupsick, R U P C Z Y K. Holla at the crew, DT. What's good, man? What's up, DT? I'll at him. What's up? What's up, Nickel City? What's up, Rob? We're back, baby. Good, good Thursday. Beautiful day. It was a nice, cool week up here in the in the rough buff. It was very cool to start. And now we're kind of cranking up to get, get ready to go for our weekend. Going to be a beautiful weekend and less than two weeks away, baby. Football's in the air. I was talking to, uh, you know, our guest. I won't, I won't. I won't uh, spill it yet, but talking to our guest pre-show on, um, you know, about summer and just really August is August is a wash. August is pre-football, right? You're just you're getting ready for fantasy. You're you're ch- seeing what games you're going to. You're planning out your your football year. August really doesn't exist. It's just the plan for the next six months of football. So I, I'm so excited to be back. I, I'm yeah. football gets me excited. It's like Christmas every year. It's 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 freaking awesome, man. I. I can't wait to get out there. A lot of questions surrounding this team this year, but ready to get into it tonight. And you know, it it it's it's tis the season, baby. We're about yeah, to hit. Baby. It. It's yeah, fall. baby. Ads about it, to clap. Ads I love it. Clack. <laughs> Click clack. We back. And it's funny because you know this show couldn't be more you know aptly named, and it couldn't be more aptly timed. We are literally seventeen days away from kickoff. Bills against the Arizona Cardinals. So I I really couldn't have planned it any better, and I didn't plan it like that on purpose. We were supposed to have him last week. He had obligations. We are so happy to have him this week. The editor-in-chief over at Buffalo Fan Base. Again, the uh, official Bills Mafia podcast network that we simulcast on. Justice General Radford. Holla at the crew, Justice. What's good with you, big man? What's good with you? What's going on, fellas? Uh, thank you for having me. As always, it is a job. I apologize about last week, but no, I'm no, glad to be here today, man. Absolutely, man. We can't wait to get started. And and just a personal shout out again. Shout out to everybody who I saw it on Twitter and Instagram, um, stuff like that. Shout it out and even Facebook as well. Um, wishing me a happy birthday last Saturday. I, I really appreciate the love um, from you guys. And Justice made me like a nice little promo thing for for Buffalo fan base that that touched my heart. So to, another- to be fair, I do want to say that was Jake Jordan. So shout out to Jake Jordan. Shout out to Jake Jordan. Then I appreciate it. You know. Um, you know, another trip around the sun. So I, again, for everybody, just, I appreciate all the well wishes uh, for my birthday last Saturday. I, I really do appreciate it. Now, now that we got that out the way, we have got to get down to business tonight, 17 days away from kickoff DT. I named the episode the way that I did because, uh, QB one is, um, you know, such a hot topic and he's somebody that we all look to, but my guest, I mean, his, his, his handle, his own Twitter and Instagram handle is at JA17 MVP. And he's been, you know, really, you know, holding that that torch for him since the beginning. You know what I mean? And I have to give it up to him for that because in the beginning, when Josh Allen was drafted and it didn't come out as Josh Ropes, and I fell to my knees at the bar. I was there. I'm going to wing night tonight at Al's DT. And I fell to my knees, like, oh my God, like I cannot believe it. But boy, has he really shown 
who he really was. And and I think that there's a lot of different factors that come in along with that to to getting him to the place that he's at now. Like I said, you see him over my shoulder on the matted cover. J.A., I, I wanted to get your opinion on this, Justice, because you are you're one of his biggest torchbearers before we get DT's thoughts. But it was funny. I was just joking with my Kings the other day. We were um, going school shopping and I was talking to him about Remember the Titans. And I remember that movie. And and it was fu funny because, you know, the new college football game came out and everybody's, you know, talking and they make these little videos where it's like we will be perfect in every way when, you know, and they're just pretending that they're talking to their old team and stuff like that. And they, those just crack me up because I love that game and I love the college football scene. But another line from that movie um, is an interesting one, and it relates to tonight's episode. Attitude reflects leadership. And, you know, it's important because of the fact that people follow you. And on a 53-man roster with grown men, a lot of them millionaires, um, and even the veteran minimum is around a million dollars, you've got to be a leader from the front, not from the back. And it's interesting because Josh Allen has been called upon to be the leader, and this really is his team. That's why I named the episode the way that I did, Jay, uh, Justice. Yeah, he, he absolutely is the leader. Um, it's funny you mentioned that. I, I remember I was watching Infinity War and I saw the we traded up to seven. We got yep, Josh yep. Allen. Yep. I was pissed. Oh my God, I was mad. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> and I, I do want to say that, I, that to be fair. But um, I mean, objectively speaking, if you took names off the board, Mm -hmm. And you just put straight numbers and facts on the paper and said, this is what this quarterback had to work with. This is what this quarterback had to work with. And these are their numbers. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen has objectively had been the best quarterback in the league for the past five years. So, I mean, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt, right? Okay. Um, because Stefan Diggs was an absolutely phenomenal football player. And I, I think that he also brought uh, a certain competitiveness that, made people want to be better, have mm -hmm. to be better. There wasn't no choice in the matter, right? He demanded um, it. Mm -hmm. Demanded it for sure. And uh, I think that that energy will, will definitely be missed. But at the same time, I do think that these guys have learned how to become winners, uh, you know, learned how to become better leaders. Um, and, you know, you got to realize that this is the second most winningest team, only second to – Mm -hmm. literally the greatest dynasty ever. I mean, statistically, mm -hmm. the best dynasty ever. This mm -hmm. is the only team that's even come close to the winning percentage, the scoring, the – like, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. I, again, you, you can't just – one player uh, – fair enough, two two players, two wide receivers, I feel like leaving will hurt us, but ultimately I, I don't think it will be it, – it'll just be a bump in a row. I feel like, you know, the, uh, this is a great quarterback with a great offense and – you know, that's going to continue to show. Well, we'll get into that tonight. Don't jump ahead. You got the notes. We'll oh, get my bad. I'm, sorry. I'm teasing you, I'm man. Sorry. I'm teasing. We'll get into that. We'll get into that because I've got some I hate when Mookie that. do that, so I've I don't got some do opinions. I've got some opinions on that. But, you know, DT, it's funny that, that you know, you know, Justice talked about, you know, the the actual, you know, the leadership and, and digs and different things like that. And I know that that's a hot topic. But, you know, when I named the episode the way that I did, it was because of the fact that there's really no more excuses, uh, DT. And you've talked about it. Um, really since last season. And it's a situation where there's not really, there's nothing really else to, that, that anybody can look in respect to not even just the offense. I'm talking about the team because, because justice is right that, you know, Stefan Diggs did bring a, a level of competitiveness and he did bring a level of, you know what I mean? I'm going to, I'm going to stay in your ass, that type of thing. And it kind of brought everybody's energy up. And that was really from the moment in the door. And you can't find too many people that are going to badmouth him from Deion Dawkins on down and the wide receiver room. Nobody really badmouths him on his way out the door. DT, Josh has to be a leader from the front, and I've been calling for it, but you've actually been on it a little bit longer. And I and I wonder what you think about tonight's episode because you know I named it the way that I did because this this is his team, and then nothing even screams it more than that. When I even heard Sean McDermott the other day said, This is Josh Allen's team. And like if, if McDermott is is even putting that out there uh to the media, then you know it's gotta be true for sure. My line on one seven, one seven's addicting. One addicting. seven's addicting. That's what you say. It, That's what you like say. Generational. The last you know seven years have been such a treat to be able to call him QB one, and you know and everything that comes with it. Obviously, a few tough shortcomings, and can't get over the hump, and deservingly probably could in different eras and different times. Like the poor me, Bills drought type of mindset there. Like we finally get a quarterback, and. 
just in time for the Chiefs to have Pat Mahomes and their dynasty to start just when we get, you know, our generational guy, right? But the fact of, you know, which, which is better here, right? What's better to be a leader in this league amongst men, amongst warriors? Is it kind of getting thrown in and having to be that guy in an organization that is completely, you know, inflamed and into shit, if you will? Right. Or is it kind of a longer term, you know, growth process? And Josh played his rookie year. I'm not saying, you know, you got to sit behind a, a good starter for a couple of years to, to learn the game and come in like Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes even did, right? Right. But I'm then saying the 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 reins weren't given to him his rookie year. There was other talent on the team. There was other leadership in the room. <clears throat> excuse me, um, to kind of hand that and show him how to lead, right? So I right. think you know what's better. Um, you know we weren't desperate, and you see this every year with all these teams drafting quarterbacks in the first round, and it's a complete dumpster fire. And it's like you got to be the guy, and it's a twenty year old kid that you know has to go lead you know, a bunch mm -hmm. of, of warriors, right? And right. It sometimes doesn't, you, you see the confidence just dis, dissipate quick and they never pan out. And, you know, it could be detrimental to their career and what could have been. I think it's a good buildup of Josh Allen and one seven to do this. I, you know, I don't know if we'll get into digs later, right? If, if that was what was needed for him to be, you know, this leader, but mm -hmm. I like that it, it was a slow buildup and he's learned and he's learned what not to do. He's learned what to do. And mm -hmm. it seems like he's making the all the decisions of what to do a lot more than what not to do. You know, there, there's not a lot of complaints in the actual, that department. And I talked about, it, it's my biggest thing, you know, Rob, like this gold retriever energy bullshit, all and this, <laughs> you know, Buffalo media wants to be all about this and loves it. No, Josh, he's like a gold retriever. Like, nah, we need, we need a meaner dog you know, to start coming out and, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, be, be lead from the front with, with conviction, with passion, with I'm the best player, but you can all be with me, you know, follow these steps. So I think he has built up to the right way to where he okay. needs to be right now. And, okay. you know, I'm comfortable sitting here, you know, year seven going into, okay, now it's all yours. I think you've studied for the test enough. I'm confident we're going to get a good score here. It's interesting to say that because Justice, there was one thing that I wanted to touch on quickly before because I want to talk about the locker room and, and really dig into that. Um, but you know, there was one thing that that caught my eye, and I'd mentioned it a couple episodes ago, and, and DT is already familiar. But you know, um, I think it was Tim Graham came out through a report that you know Terry Pagula had made some comments about you know kind of almost like an edict to to Sean McDermott and to Brandon Bean that he wanted Josh to start to separate himself from his peers a little bit um, and then more have like more of an executive role. Um, and it doesn't mean that he's, you know, he's not going to play cards because you hear about training camp and those guys play cards and they go out and they have offensive dinners and different things like that. But it was more along the lines of just um, there has to be some type of, of line of delineation. There has to be some type of separation between himself and his peers. And I'm wondering what you thought about that, or even if you heard about that from Tim Graham, because I know Tim had to actually go on Twitter and make some comments and kind of clear some things up because people had said, well, did, you know, did Pagula make this edict? And did he say that Josh doesn't need to be a part of the team? What the case may be? And it really wasn't that, but he was trying to come up with a way to at least convey to Josh that he is separate, that he is not mm -hmm. the same as the other 52 guys. And I wanted to know if you had picked up on that or heard about that. A couple, it was a couple weeks back, but we had talked about it here a couple weeks ago. And I thought it was, I thought that was interesting. It was something that, that caught my eye. I didn't hear about that. I do okay. think it's interesting, but I do also believe it's a good problem to have. Okay. Um, your quarterback is one of the fellas, you yep. know, the fellas believe in your quarterback so much that, you know, they, they feel like he's one of them and, Okay. You know the, the the what who make the best generals? The guy who the soldiers know, all right, he's gonna get his hands dirty. <clears throat> he right, not right. sitting up in some throne room, sending us off to die. He's right. on the front lines with us, battling it out. And who else would do? Who else would give you that type of security other than Josh Allen, who's out there jumping over people, running over linebackers, right? Absolutely. Stiff arming all pro, all galaxy defensive tackles, right? So. Right. I feel like it's a good problem to have. I do. I, I can understand the idea of wanting him to not be so goofy and silly, right. um, but also on the same tip, like if that is who he like, I don't think he's that way on game day. You know what I mean? Right. I've seen right. him in, in the uh, divisional game. He's on the sideline screaming at people like, Let's go! like, you know what right, I mean? Right, like right, right, he right. can give you that energy when he need it. And also I've also heard that Josh Allen is one of the craziest, 
trash talkers in the NFL. Yeah. So yeah. he's all he he does feel like he's the best player in the world. And I promise you, he'd be telling people that on the field. And you know, <laughs> right. it's here, and you know his teammates hear that. So yeah. I, I do I do think that he brings that type of energy as well. But then to also be a you know, a guy who's uh, approachable and who's, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you, like you said, you one of the fellas, like yeah, you said, exactly. he has people over exactly. his house. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that you get the best of both worlds in that case. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I like don't that. think, you know, I don't think we're ever going to see the extreme of, you know, the Kobe Bryant's, the Michael Jordan, the Tiger Woods, right. like that type of psychopath. Right. But, you know, but I think he definitely can get more toward in that middle realm of, you know, of getting a little more aggressive and a little more top, you know, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning esque, right? When it when it comes to that type of stuff, like I don't, you know, I don't think he's full on, you know, doing doing Navy Seal training from Tiger Woods <laughs> is, you know, for fun because he likes pain and shit like that. Right, but, right, you right. Know, I think he definitely has some room to get to the middle. I mean, you were talking about Deion Dawkins and the teammates. Deion Dawkins telling stories this offseason of like. Yes. You know, he said, MJ, don't talk to my quarterback. Yeah, I, I look at my quarterback like MJ. And yep. you don't talk. You should be that. talking to him. You like you don't know that he's doing it. Like you're talking to MJ. Yeah. So like, I love that. that yeah. like, that's some shit right there. That one really stuck it. to me. Like, like, and we talk about is the, is the team receding? Hell yeah. If the team is is putting you on the pedal, you know, Michael Jordan is, you know, the goal, whatever we, that's right, right, right. for a different time. But to, to – <laughs> to put him at that level and respect him at that level, it means they're listening to what he's saying. So I guess we'll get into tonight. What's he saying? Absolutely. I like that for sure. And yes, I loved it when I heard Deion talk about him. Like he said, you don't talk to my quarterback. Like you don't know that he's Jordan. And like, I mean, I just, I just love everything about Mm -hmm. Deion Dawkins. I love what he represents. And I know that justice echoes that as well, because um, he's just a cool cat and he's a real cat. And I mean, you used to go to justice because I, I love Dion's energy. Just the his energy is what I like. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just that's just the way I, I, I relate to it. That's all. It's funny before DT even brought up Jordan, something he said reminded me of something I thought about earlier. That literally today, mm-hmm. where I was like, Josh Allen is literally LeBron James, right? Okay, he's the LeBron James of the NFL, right? You know, okay. He, you know, people <laughs> criticize him like. Not that it's bad to be like that Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan psychopath, right? Right. But LeBron never was that. You know what I mean? And people always criticize him for it. He's a connector. And right, 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 right. He's a communicator. He's a, He's a you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he still ended up becoming a great leader. And I was like, that reminds me so much of Josh Allen. And not only that, but mm-hmm. LeBron does everything on the court, right? Right. Uh, you know, That's assists, right. points, rebounds, steals, blocks. Like he, he does it all. Right. And his teammates have a habit of staring at greatness and kind of just stopping their feet on the floor and just watching him go. Yes. I feel like the Bills have a habit of doing that sometimes too. Or mm-hmm. just like, oh my God, he just made that play. And you get so you like you're on the field, buddy. Like, come on, like, you know yep. what I'm saying? Help yep. him out. Yep. You know, and, and it's like I just see a lot of parallels between Josh Allen and Michael Jordan. Or I'm sorry, Josh Allen and LeBron James. So it's Funny he said that, and I just, I'm sorry, I just wanted to bring it up. No, nah, don't apologize. That's cool because I, I just read an article um, the other day about Steve McNair on ESPN and about how his his teammates did exactly what you're talking about. They would catch themselves literally uh, at Alcorn State in Mississippi just watching him play, and then they, would, they wouldn't even be paying attention to what they're supposed to be doing because the mm-hmm. greatness was just on full display. So I like mm-hmm. that comparison. Absolutely. He is, like, he is a lot like LeBron because LeBron is one of the guys that could lead the league in scoring or he could lead the league in assists on any given season if he exactly. felt like it. It's just it's just what he feels like doing at that time. And I think that Josh is capable as well. So as we transition again, over 300 people watching us on all platforms, we appreciate the crew. Bill's Mafia joining us tonight again. This tonight's episode and all episodes are presented by 26 shirts here on Buffalo fan base, the official Bill's Mafia podcast network. Again, head on over to 26 shirts.com for all of your latest Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Sabres, Buffalo City themed T-shirts. They've got great content creators. And again, portions of the proceeds go to families in need. So there's not going to be any type of wasted money where you're giving it to somebody lining their pockets. You're giving it to people that really are in need that need it. So head on over to 26shirts.com. Now, as we transition, this is one of my favorite topics because of the fact that I, I, I have to be careful now, Justice, because I've been put on an edict a couple weeks ago by uh, by DT, my partner, and I don't want to fight him all the time because he says that this is getting ready to be time to stop talking about 14. So I'm going to do it in a <laughs> roundabout way so that way DT and I can stay friends and then he's not going to get mad at me. One of the things that I've noticed um, 
throughout this offseason, and this has been consistent since the beginning. I'm talking about since spring ball. They want to talk about, oh, the locker room uh, is just so much more free, and everybody's looser, and um, everybody's chilling. There's a brotherhood, all this different type of stuff. To me, it bothers me, but it's okay, and I let it go a lot of this, this summer as well because I hear it on WGR all of the time. Oh, Josh is playing freer, or oh, Josh is looser. It's almost a backhanded way of saying Stefan Diggs is not here anymore. Everybody's buttholes ain't tight no more. Everybody gets a chance to just kind of loosen up. That's cool. It just better work. Did Stefan Diggs, did 14 suck the air out of that locker room? Because what I'm hearing lately is that, oh, everything is just so much more free. And Sean McDermott even says in his press conference, oh, I just love the collaboration and I love the wide receiver room and the unselfishness and all these all these other code words. And again, I have to stay on brand for Nickel City Crew because my, my listeners know who I am and they know the type of person that I am in respect to defending Stefan Diggs. So again, I won't mention 14 anymore, but did he kind of suck – the, the energy out of the locker room because all I hear all offseason since the spring is that everything is just so much more free. Everybody is just so much more loose. I, I Okay, it better work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I, I think something had to give, right? It wasn't just one four. I mean, we did a whole revamp of a lot of different things, you know, of a lot of players, of a lot of schemes, of a lot of personnel. There, it's, a, it's kind of a new team, if you will. The core is the core, is the core and it's a new team everywhere around. So – it had to come to a head of every year, you know, not making it to the big one. And, you know, it was it a failure? Was it a failure? Like you, you can't do that for 12 years in a row. Like mm-hmm. eventually you got, you got to reset, set the tone, reset the vibe, reset the structure, you know, to, and if it, if it is, you know, free flowing or whatever it is this off season uh, to get them to do that, as opposed to, the past couple of years where it's been okay nothing matters until we get back and we got to win that big game right. which in, in the end that is all that matters that's the but goal. I, mm-hmm. I i do like kind of the change of vibe and atmosphere because it just they're changing it up what we've been doing what we talked about with one four all this time was we can't you know what his biggest thing was can't just run it back right can't just right. run it back <laughs> and so they're they're in their way doing their own way of you know getting better but not just running it back and doing everything that they've been, you know, doing in insanity that you know, find is doing something over and over again, expecting different results. So I like the change up. I like the, the, the mood swing, but I'll tell you, obviously from experience, it doesn't matter how loosey goosey it is. You go in here and, and get bopped on week one against an Arizona team. It, that shit tightens right back up. The media, That's right. the, the That's fans, right. uh, that loosey goosey shit goes directly out the window immediately. That's right. So I'm not worried that it's going to like, dig into the you know like oh we're too we're too relaxed because right. they know if, if it happens once it we're right back into into serious mode right so i like the way we're changing things up because we're not doing the same thing as we've been doing but it, it they also i think the team knows it it will get more serious than you want it to get if you if you fuck around right so this is um uh, we'll, we'll ride it for now i'll say that we'll ride it for now Justice General Radford, our guest tonight, our resident Josh Allen expert, please, you have the floor because that's why I brought you on the show tonight. Talk about Josh because, I mean, listen, I hear it, and you know I'm not lying. I'm not, am, I, am I making it up? If I'm making it up, then call me a liar, uh, Justice. But I've heard, I mean, I hear it a bunch of different ways that everything is just looser and everything is just a little bit more freer in that locker room. And um, I think it's code for something else, and that's fine. It just better work. I, I mean, I feel like it's a, two, a double-sided, you know, blade, uh, just like anything, right? Okay. Just Josh Allen being one of the fellas, is it sounds amazing until the fellas, you know, uh, maybe don't have the respect they should for Josh Allen. I'm not saying that they don't, right, or, right. you know what I'm saying? But you run the risk of that happening, right? Right. Um, just like having that, you know, infectious energy and hype and mm-hmm. you know leadership you know you get the the other end of that which is like you know if if you do something wrong is, is mom about to beat this shit out of me right now right, you know right. what i mean like <laughs> you get that anxiety right like you know yep, what i mean like i grew up with that <laughs> you're right yeah we all you know what i'm saying so like i i you know have not having you know that around right um so now you kind of in the college dorm room on your own. Ain't nobody there to, to yell at you if you do something wrong. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and yep. if you are a a well 
if you're a well-raised child and or a well-coached team, then okay. that won't be a problem. Okay. Not having a disciplinary, you know, person to that, you know, aggressive nature won't mm -hmm. be a problem. That it, you know what I mean? You you then that almost became abuse, right? Mm -hmm. However, I know if if you are a potentially problematic person and you needed that tough love in order to get you going, in order to make you, you know, do better, that was then you needed that. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? You yep. needed that. And if you lose that, now you're gonna fall off the wagon, right? You're, you're right. So yeah, you speak the truth. We'll see, you know, which team the Bills are. They they I mean, on from outside looking in, it seems to be they are a well coached team. Um, they were starting to do well before Diggs even got there. So you have to imagine or at least hope that a lot of that was coaching, which it took off when he came though. I mean, no, 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 no. I, I'm not I'm not doubting that at all. I'm yeah. I'm I'm just <laughs> simply talking about they were one thing one year. Yes. And then the coaching helped them become better the next year. Absolutely. So I was just speaking McDermott to the broke the drought. Line that was broke the already drought. happening. Absolutely. Diggs obviously made them sky, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Out the strike. I understand. I understand. Uh, 100%. I'm, 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 I don't want to take it bad at me. I won't interrupt you. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what type of team the Bills are. If they're a well-coached team that, that really didn't need all that extra, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and, and now people's, you know, aren't clenching <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or we'll see if, if they needed that and they, they lost, they, they edge and they the spark edge. and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, we'll see. All right. Well, I, I, I stand, I mean, I'll stand down on that. I just, you know, I heard it. It was a narrative. I know I'm not making it up and DT heard it as well. And, and you can hear it in different press conferences from Sean McDermott on down that the, you know, in the locker room, this and the locker room that, and, and um, unselfishness and different things like that. I hear a lot of different code words and that's fine. Um, I would like it to work and that's fine. Now, one of the ways that it is gonna work is for our next topic. And as we transition is who who in the ham sandwich as my father would say, rest in peace, is Josh Allen throwing to. Just as general, I, um, I kind of went off last week with this whole everybody eats and um, it was getting on my nerves. And it was a situation where I really just, I'm not, it was a couple episodes ago and I, it just, I wasn't really with it. We had on, um, we had on Jay Spence the King and we, we tried to chop it up. We tried to talk about it and I'm still not really comfortable with it, but everybody eats is getting ready to get the ultimate test because what this really says, regardless if it's about 14, um, regardless if it's about the cap or a combination of the both or, 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 you know, the locker room, if it's just a combination of everything for whatever reason, this is what they chose. This is what everybody wanted to, to go after in respects to Brandon Bean and, and Sean McDermott in this approach. It better work because now what you're looking at is is Josh Allen ready to be the elevator man? Is he ready to to lift? You know the the tide that lifts all boats. Is he ready to be that type of guy? In your opinion, um, I know that you love him. I know that you're biased towards him, and that's fine. And we love the Josh Allen love here at Nickel City Crew. But I wanted to get your thoughts on it because everybody eats is about to get the ultimate test because. Um, you know, you've got a bunch of C's and B minuses and different things like that. And you and it really is on your quarterback to to raise to raise the level. Tom Brady didn't always have Randy Moss and he won Super Bowls. And actually, ironically, he didn't win a Super Bowl when he had Moss. So, Randy Moss right, you know, yeah. I mean, so that's ironic within itself. But I wanted to get your thoughts on it. Do you love 17? And I'm not hating on you for that. I love 17, but um, you love him on a different level. Is Josh Allen ready to show everybody that he is? I, the, the elevator man, like he, like see, you have to raise up the level of play if you have subpar weapons. You do. I'm sorry, and 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 so, or or average weapons. I don't I don't want to say subpar and then get everybody in Bills Mafia mad at me. Average at best. I'm sorry, but outside of Kincaid, average wide receiver room. I think and ESPN just ranked all the position groups. Their wide receiver room was third from from the bottom. It was like only better than New England and one other team. So, first of all. Um, Josh Allen is the moon. Okay, he raises all tides. Oh, okay, I love it. The, the the ocean moves when Josh Allen moves. Okay, so here's the thing: I Josh Allen had the best wide receiver in Bills history, bar none. Andre, yeah, no, no, let me not yeah, yeah. So, Andre Eric, or, or I mean, Andre Eric, Andre Reed, they all in and the. I'm, I'm sorry, I even did that, but. <laughs> Stephon Diggs is the best receiver in Bills history, and that's just the truth of the matter. That's an right? opinion, and yeah, yeah. I, I mean, a lot so, of people would agree. And even having him, mm -hmm. a lot of times Josh Allen had to had to had to improvise and and basically do it himself. I mean, 
of course, not doing himself because it's a team game. I know but what you mean. He, he has on the to Superman play game. of the scheme so often. Mm -hmm. It's like second nature to him at this point. Okay. So, I mean, you know, everybody eats sounds bad, but the Chiefs just won the Super Bowl and everybody eats. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, <laughs> like, I, you know, so you get. I should have had you, you know, off in the offensive buffet. <laughs> yeah. So you get a player who is already used to playing above the scheme, already used to having to do extra anyway. He, that's just his comfort zone at this point. You know, uh, now you have instead of one really good receiver and then mm -hmm. a bunch of uh, right you get a couple good receivers and then you know some decent ones or whatever um mm -hmm. and you know you get two really good tight ends you get a really good running back you have a a, a damn good offensive line that's been kind of proving themselves a little bit so well not in the preseason, but we don't hold the preseason against them. Yeah, don't that's, um, don't talk about the line around DT. That's we'll, his we'll, that's his hot button issue. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. To week one. Um, but I, you know, Josh Allen is used to playing above above the scheme, so I have to believe that this won't be too much different for him. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's no. I mean, put all the the roses away that everybody eats. Whatever. Josh Allen's going to have to play the season of his life for the Bills to be competitive this year. There's no if and buts about it. But, as Justice was saying, he has played the season of his life every year up until now. You know, it's not like he's playing mediocre-ass seasons. His his seasons are statistically, other than, you know, year one, it, well, not year one, year two when they made the playoffs and, you know, go 10-6 and and, and lose to uh, Houston. After that, statistically, we're almost identical in – in statistics so he has played up up to the scheme obviously did have stefan Diggs all those years did have Gabe davis all those years so he's gonna have to definitely up his game and like everybody eats all that doesn't just mean it's gonna work josh allen has to make it work and get everybody to eat so there's there's so much more on his plate as, as we talk about and the pressure of him but they're giving it to him knowing and thinking he's ready and he's taking it saying he's ready i mean I'm, i don't think he would say nah i'm actually I don't think I'm ready to be a top tier, you know, uh, a leader in this in this league. Obviously, he's ready for it, but he's gonna have to play literally the top, the best season of his career this year for the Bills to have a chance. Straight up, straight up. Interesting, interesting. I mean, I, I, what happens? To, okay, so where's that crowd then? I, I, maybe you guys are not in that crowd. What happens to the crowd that always says, "Well, you have to take more off of Josh Allen's plate." We, I mean, listen, I'm in the, I'm in, I'm searching for that feeling again you know what feeling i'm searching for i'm searching for um an offensive coordinator who was completely competent getting the best out of 17 i'm searching for um 14 who's flanked out by number one emmanuel sanders and then all of a sudden there's another option gabe davis and then there's another option it, i'm looking for um dawson knox who, who was coming into his own at that time i'm looking to get back to that feeling of 13 seconds because that was the team in my opinion that had the best opportunity to win a super bowl i argue with people on twitter it, it seems like every other day that that might have been our best opportunity um to win the super bowl and then when they want to go back at me about mcdermott this and that and then we can go back and forth all day i'm searching for that feeling again that's what i want to get back to and to me i always want to surround him with the most talent as possible now again i can give credit to the fact that maybe and give credence to the fact that maybe it was a little bit of salary cap a little bit of Diggs was upset. A little bit of we need to reset. Brandon Bean spoke about it. We talked about it, DT, how Brandon Bean even said that it was important to get guys that were removed from 13 seconds because he didn't want to have that type of stuff lingering. We did an entire episode on that. So I understand all of those things, and they have their merit. But to me – ask you a question real quick, Rob? Go ahead. Why don't you feel like last year was a was a prime year first on the Super Bowl? Last year? Yeah, I, I felt that way until 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 the shit started. Until we were six and six, and me and DT were doing no, 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 no. Yeah. But we were the hottest team in the NFL going into the playoffs. I felt I listen I, because of the opponent. Because of the opponent, I was not I was not outwardly um, optimistic about the divisional round game. Now I was there with DT. We went well, to breakfast. Why did we we had lose to that opponent. Excuse me. Why did we lose to that opponent? Everybody's gonna say injuries, right? <clears throat> Everybody's gonna say injuries. No, why? So why did we lose that? <clears throat> they gonna point to a specific play. Oh, please! That a large part 
Please don't tell me about that drop. That drop didn't even – he wasn't even going to score on that play. We still have to finish it that drive. It doesn't matter. We still have you, to finish that you, drive. You clear oh, 50% please. of the field oh, please. with don't four extra no minutes on the clock. Please don't start. Are you serious? You're one of those I'm people that fight with on Twitter? Um, dead so the, serious. So the Stefan Diggs drop cost us that game? Not the injured it, linebacker? It's a, it's a, no, 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 no. I'm not. We I'm gave up a, eight I'm not a, explosive I'm not a plays player. that day. Eight. It was certainly a large part of the drop, though. It changed the game. It we changed the dynamic. He was not the scoring game. a touchdown on that play. He was going to fall Bass on that, that field goal, and we don't have any time on the clock because we had to drive the rest of the way down the field because he dropped that pass. Wow, that's what happened. <laughs> I, I, mean, I know we dropped the ball, but we still have to finish yeah. that drive. All right, all right, but there's you know there's we still Chris have to finish Jones that getting, drive. There's Chris Jones getting. I'm not in like I said. I'm not a monolithic person. There's, I'm, but you know, there's that's a large part of why it happened. You can't say that our window is closed. And then directly be a part of the reason we lose. Ooh. Ooh. That's a hard one for me to swallow. I'm sorry. That was a big drop. I understand it, it was a big help. drop. But di I didn't say that it helped. No, it didn't help. I understand that it didn't help. It was a big drop. But I can't put that on him. Eight no. explosive like plays, eight plays. Goal. We couldn't stop yeah. Pat all day. Even though they were running that stupid ass offense where they're trying to control the clock and, and limit possessions. Every time he got on the field, he was he was burning us. Eight explosive plays in the game is not supposed yeah. to happen. You play football, yeah. Justice. That's a lot. Eight plays of 20 yards or more? I don't know, man. I know that Bills Mafia loved to hate on 14 after it was over, and, and all they want to do is show gifts of that drop. Right. I don't think that that drop lost the game. We still have to finish that drive. But like, if, you're, if you're out here saying, like Anthony Edwards, let's say Anthony Edwards missed the game winning you know, shot. Because he talked so much, you're going to be like, yo, you talking all the why is you the one out here messing up? Okay. He's, he's not a cyborg, but okay. I, this is no, not no, going to no. be a and Stephon Diggs defense that, episode because we've already done that. You, but see what we was talking about when we were talking about if mama go with me or not, right? right? So everybody else, when they mess up, they butt clitch because they're like, oh, God, am I about to get <laughs> reprimanded right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know? I, okay. I was, I just don't. I just don't. I wouldn't put that that drop on the game. But but yes, it was it was a monumental drop. It was a big. It was a big drop. DT, you could try to save this because if you want. But I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to just fight justice all night about that drop. Yeah, but I, no, I, I understand. I, mean, not, I, I understand his premise. He was not going to score on no. that play. Is my point. So he had. He was going to fall, and we had to finish the drive. So what did Josh? So Josh throws a pick. Next play. Then what? So I mean, yeah. and it wasn't targeted to Stefan Diggs. Then what? And, I mean, and Chris Jones getting that game. blown into was, him. The <laughs> defense, the defense not stopping shit. The Tyler Bates eight explosive right, but my point uh, is, he wasn't stopping Hamlin's anything. Hamlin's if he catches that pass, yeah. there's an extra four minutes on the clock for us to get the ball back. That's what I'm saying. It's a sure. it's a huge part of the game. You know what I'm saying. You That's still have to get the ball back to Mahomes though. Right, but if he scores, now you have time on the clock. But. I mean, if I, I I'm going on my cardinal sin here, we're talking about Stefan Diggs, but the, <laughs> I mean, I if I'm critical, I'm not. I mean, yes, the drop didn't help, and it sucks, and it sucks that it's so up in front and posterized. It was a big. But drop. if I'm being critical of one four, it's it's not that catch. It's the last half of the season of pr productivity. You know, that's where I'm critical of him last year. Not not I dropping. Mean, I blame Brady. Down. So <laughs> I got a rebuttal so for that. I blame Brady. So I mean, but <laughs> I'm saying if, I, if I'm picking if I'm picking one of those two, it's yeah. production over that catch. Y'all, oh, y'all right, know, know, know how to get under my skin, man. Y'all know how to get under my skin. I, I mean, y'all know but how to see, get under my the skin. The same way you critical of Josh, Rob, we allowed to be critical of stuff. Uh, big drop. I, I just say he's the best player in Bills history. Come on, bro. You can't be mad to say he dropped a pass. It was a huge drop. Big drop. Big drop changed the complexion of the game absolutely at that point in time. There was no guarantee that he's scoring what, on that play, so, and 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 we sure, gave up eight so explosive your, plays that day. Point, they had our number that day because of the because of the injury. So I I don't think. But we your were point, I game. think, Justice, are you trying to say basically that that drop? Not that it cost us the game, but oh, he is. <laughs> what's the accountability? What's the accountability of that drop? Right? Is it just him? You know, going over the sideline? Like, yeah, I dropped it or. If somebody well, else dropped, he that, did this, but it, it didn't that mean that Josh missed about? it. He did this, meaning that no, 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 it was this close. So, so here's here's the accountability portion of the drop, right? This is the end of the season. This is the biggest game of your season so far, right? Right. You want to make it to the next game, which will then become the biggest game. But this Correct. is the biggest game of your season so far. Correct. This is the a dynasty, like we just mentioned. Okay. This is the team. This is the team you can't do that against, right? Because they're gonna make you pay for every mistake. 
Okay. Right? I'm with so you still. This is the fourth quarter of a game. Okay. With six, seven minutes left, something seven like minutes, that. Seven to change. Right. Okay. So if you can take up 50 to 60% of the field on one play, okay. that dramatically changes your probability of winning. Because not only do you now put yourself in a better position to score quicker, if they score, you right. now get the chance to score last. Unless As they, opposed unless to they having the to clock. drive down the field, you know what I mean? And now you wasted up that five, six minutes, and now you're bum-ass ki- – I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I understand. I mean, The bum kicker the is a bum and bumming it out in bummed vid- bumville. And and now, but then everybody in Bills Mafia wants to tell me that even if if Bass kicked it, that they were going to lose the game anyway because Mahomes is getting ready to get the, the ball. The Bills played so, the Chiefs earlier in that I season. Mean, Patrick Mahomes had a chance to win on the last drive. Guess what he didn't do? He didn't win because of an offsides. So I don't I, I don't he puff out my chest over that <laughs> game. I don't. I, I know. I know he didn't win, but they I don't. I don't puff. Four my chances out. to score after that offsides, and he no, still I didn't win. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I guess I mean I I'm, I'm in a situation where I don't I don't um I'm just I'm wondering who he's getting ready to throw to and I'm just wondering if everybody understands that he has to raise the level of play for others around him and as we begin Definitely. to wrap up tonight on my last um topic is that you know just because of the fact that you know why I guess it's fair to ask then since you you've already segued into it for me Justice what are the expectations that you have for this team this year because you know. I'm I told you know I confessed to Nickel City crew. I, I told DT that I expect a 10 and 7 year. I expect um maybe that's good enough to win the division. Maybe it's not. Just get into the playoffs, wild card if need be, and then go from there. My expectations are not on Super Bowl this year because of the fact that we lost um all the pieces that we did. Now, again, um, it's chiefly 14, but it, you know, there's other pieces as well. I understand that the safeties were a little bit longer in the tooth, so a lot of people like to say, Well, really, what were you losing? And I understand that sentiment. Even before the Milano injury, um, you know, people want to say, Well, Morris, this and that, he's probably one of the only ones that you're losing, but you know, the team looks roughly the same. I even heard that this morning on WGR. So I can go with that sentiment outside of the wide receiver room, but the wide receiver room spooks me. Um, so because of that, what are your expectations for this team for the 2024 Buffalo Bills? Because I love how you talked about how Josh Allen has to put the cape on, but I hear an awful lot of people, off, not you, but an awful lot of people in Bills Mafia that say, oh, we need to take less. We need to take more off of Josh Allen's play. He does too much. He puts the cape on too much. And I don't know how you do that with the wide receiver room that we have. Dal- so- Dalton Kincaid aside, I, unless Dalton Kincaid is the next coming of, Antonio, you know, uh, you know, Anthony Gonzalez or whatever his name is. Like, I don't, I don't know. Tony Gonzalez. I don't know. I don't know. Gonzalez, I, yeah. I don't know how we do it. I don't know. Not with this wide receiver room. That was a bunch so, of seeds. If you, if you were, I, I wouldn't say that the wide receiver room would be the, the piece that would take so much off of, off of Josh's plate, because no matter who's the wide receiver on the field, he has to get the ball there. Right. Okay. He has to see them be open and he has to make that play no matter who it is. And I don't care if this, prime A.J. Brown right there. But we have you confidence I mean? for that. You just said he's been the best quarterback in the league the last five yeah. years. So, right. But I, I feel like the run game is what takes pressure off Josh, right? You got James Cook who was a top five running back in the league last year. You got an mm-hmm. offensive line who has another year. Obviously, you you lose Mitch Morris, which is huge. I don't want to understate that. Right. But they have basically another five year of continuity. Four out of five for starters most, are back. For the most part, right. So I feel like that is what takes pressure off Josh because if he has a reliable run game that can give him four or five yards of carry, then that opens up the door for so much else. And I do think Khalil Shakir can actually give you like wide receiver number one numbers. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I I see him having 100 plus catches, maybe going for a ban. I really do. Really? Um, I do. I do. I like Shakir. I really do. Wow. On the outside? What I, from what I've seen and Josh Allen specifically, even going back to the end of last year, he was putting on. Okay. Khalil Shakir was putting on. Primarily so from the I, slot or on the outside, or it doesn't matter? They Cooper Cup did it from wherever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, our Puka Nakua do it from wherever. So, I feel like the X factor in this equation, and plus, like I said, Dalton Kincaid, and don't sleep on Dalton, Dalton, Dalton Knox either. I feel like the X factor is Keanu Coleman because he's the only one who we don't know where we're going to get anything from, right? He could be the next Justin Jefferson. He could be the next Martez Marquez Van Lee Skip, whatever the hell his name is. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So mm-hmm. we, we don't really know, right? Um, and I feel like that's where you kind of get your X factor. Curtis Samuel is going to come in and be a positive no matter what because mm-hmm. he can do so many different things from so many different places on the field. Okay. Um, he, he spreads out the field dramatically. 
uh, I, I just, you know, so you expect so, this offense not to skip a beat. This is this it is depends. No it depends on Joe Brady. It really does. Depends on Brady. Yeah. If, if he's creative enough to make it happen, it can happen. Sean McVay will go crazy with this offense. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan will go insane oh, with this offense. You, I mean, these I'm receivers not are. I, I'm go not ahead, there. DT. Go I'm ahead, not DT. there. I, I, I think know. this room's a little unacceptable. Um, I think you know it, it is what it is. You got to bite. You got to bite what you got to bite. But eleven and six get you the two seed last year. You know, and I'm not. <sighs> I'm not hoping to just get in, but 11 and six with a two seed in a stat conference, you know, even if things go a little more south than that, you still got a chance to get in and, and Josh Allen playoff time is, you know, it definitely somebody I want on my team. Right. So Absolutely. this, this, I'm not, I don't love the receiving room. You, like you said, you don't know what you're going to get from anybody, even well, Shakir. I mean, he just gave, he not. just gave his list of, of, of what I, he expects. I, I feel like, I feel like Coleman's the only one I don't know what I'm going to get from. But, but we okay. talked about, you know, we know what we need, right? And we talked about this coming up. Like, we don't know what we're going to get, but we definitely know what we need. So if everyone can rise up a little bit, as we as I did, and kind of broke down that incremental increase episode mm -hmm. where we mm -hmm. went through everybody on the team, and I thought it was very conservative, doable numbers to get to, you know, it, it kind of fills the, the voids to get Josh Allen to 4,200 yards, 37 touchdowns, you know, that year on year pace where he's a top quarterback in the league and we're, we're in the one seed conversation. Okay. So we know, we don't know what we're going to get, but we know what we need. So as I talked, you know, in previous weeks of like this, if worst case scenario, and I don't want this to happen, but worst case scenario, all this goes to shit because we don't have the horses to run. We know what we need. We know we need horses. You know, if this works, and it and then that's even opens it to a bigger opening. Like, okay, now we literally can do it with anybody. So I I think worst case scenario, we know what the answer is. You know, it's 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 going to be black or white, straight up. This is what we need. This is what we don't need. And then we'll know. Go moving forward, and we're going to be successful with it. And it's going to take a lot of pressure off. And that might be like Bean saying, damn, we'd never have to pay a receiver again. Or it's going to be, yeah, screw this. We got to we gotta go get somebody right now. We got to go put 40 mil on, on a wide out right now. So uh, Josh that's not Allen has to elevate. 2024. I mean, that's not happening. Josh this year. Allen has to elevate. No, that's what I'm saying. Next, next year. Yeah, next um, year it is. Oh, next you know, year, yeah, sure. we'll, we'll have our answer. We don't know what, what we're going to get, but we know what we need. And if we don't get that, we, we just got to go out and get what we need. So I, I – I like the clarity of it all, but I don't want to sacrifice the season and not get there. But at the same time, 11 and six is the two seed last year, you know, uh, sneak in. I'm okay. Justice, justice seems like he knows he seems to know. I mean, I liked Curtis Samuel. Um, I thought that he was a piece that never played with a good quarterback. We talked about him on our offensive buffet episode uh, covering the offense. Um, I, you know, Shakir, I liked him. Obviously they, they chose to throw to him instead of 14. That was Joe Brady. Um, you know, that's what I blame it on. I don't blame it on any type of deterioration with 14 at the second backhand, uh, the back end of last year. So maybe you're right on that. Um, you're right about Keon Coleman. He's definitely an X factor. We don't know what we're going to get from him. Um, I just, nothing else excites me about it. You know, about the room MVS. No nope. Claypool goes to IR. I wasn't even counting on him making the team. So you seem to be a little bit more optimistic about the actual wide receiver room itself. And that's fine. I, I run into a lot of bills, mafia members that are that way. I just don't, I see a bunch of C's and maybe some B minuses and I, and I, okay. I mean, it could work. And, and maybe like you said, Josh Allen is the moon. So he's going to rise all tides and the ocean doesn't even operate without him. And, and maybe you're absolutely right. I don't, I don't know. I just thought that it was curious and I wanted to get into it tonight about the expectations for the year. So um, as we wrap up tonight, you know, just justice, you are, you are expecting everything to just click just fine in respects of the offense. It's, there's just no, there's nothing other than that. 17 is, he's got our back. He's got it. And if he has to put on the Superman cape, he could do that too. He, I mean, I mean, cause he's done it. And right about that. Too, like, you know, like, yeah. So uh, before, before I go, I just want to, I just want to leave y'all with something. Okay. Okay. This is a draft analysis. Okay. For, for uh, Justin Jefferson, a quarterback's okay. best friend. With contested catch focus and extreme ball skills to boost completion percentages. Okay. He failed to stand out as an outside target. Okay. Are you trying but to saw his stock stuff? soar in the slot with a uh, monster season. He has decent speed and separation talent, but needs to improve as a route runner. Okay. 
Oh, you do Keon Coleman. Okay. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. I mean, yeah, they said he can't create separation. He's only caught two balls in the preseason. It's preseason. Who cares? I hear that. Yeah. So, I mean. And they didn't they didn't bring him in to be a B. They brought him in to be Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs. Yeah, Maybe I mean, not, I, I just think that's a lot year. to put on his plate. Yeah, I'm I think not that's a lot. No, no, no. I'm not putting. I'm just, he, just I think saying. That's a lot. He's drafted. They, they said a lot of the Justin same Jefferson. things about Justin Jefferson before he's, he's drafted, drafted to be Justin Jefferson and, and Stephon Diggs. I'm not. I'm not expecting him to do that this year, but they drafted him to be that. Like straight up, they're not drafting him to be a role player. They're drafting him to be Justin Jefferson or Stephon Diggs. Well, then why did everybody in the pre-draft talk about separation as an issue, Justice? Because that's what I, that's all I heard about Keon Coleman was that he can't separate. That's that was the argument the night he was drafted on Twitter. And, and I, you were part, and I, you were I, part I, of it. Not I feel that you like were they kind of hedged their bets with. I don't think they expected him to be a Justin Jefferson or uh, Stephon Diggs because they traded back to the second round, and didn't take that extra year. So I think that that was kind of proof that they wanted to kind of be wanted him to be a part of uh, a conglomerate of a team, a mm-hmm. conglomerate. Thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's just my opinion. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, one thing that I have noticed about Josh Allen throughout the years is that, you know, the, the guess the, the number one thing that I get hit with when I go to the barbershop, and it's funny because I'm going this Saturday, get the Kings their, their haircuts before school starts next week. The number one thing I hear from the owner, and everybody knows me, I'm the Buffalo Bills guy. They know I got the podcast. Number one thing I hear when I walk in the door, and if it's, I mean, if it's after a loss or if it's after a win, your, your quarterback, he'd be doing it. He'd be doing everything. He got to He do too much. He got to do too much. Now I heard that after the Jets game, week one, and then I heard it, you know, on positive games when we lit up Miami a couple weeks later. And I'm like, what y'all got to say? What y'all got to say about my quarterback now nah, this week? So I do know that he has the ability to put on the cape. I just that I, I guess that that's just I'm revealing my true colors. I thought that our offense was the most potent back at 13 seconds i thought that those options that he had at his disposal with beasley sanders Diggs, knox like i just like i thought that we were untouchable and and even gabe Day and gabe davis the number four wide receiver has a career night because they're paying so much attention to 14 and and, and you know and sean mcdermott wasted no. away um and and i just i'm i i want that back i want all yeah. the weapons for josh allen i just feel like there's yeah. a chance there's and- a chance that we threw this this prime year into the into the volcano. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not okay with that shit. Like, I'm with you, Justin, Rob, you I, can tell me all day that he gonna be Superman, and I'm just not okay with all these C options. When I can I can win a Lombardi any year he's on the team if I can if I surround him properly. Yeah, I, 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 I truly I, believe that. I'm with you there. The goal is to get back to potent, to get back to unstoppable, to get back to layup lines, right? Yes. And the vibe, yes. the vibe right now is not that. No Positive justice. or not. No problem. Positive I mean, or not. It's not really that. Seeing the offense take it the field yet. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying the vibe. The vibe. <laughs> the, the, the take on You're this right. is we're not the preseason Super Bowl favorites like we have been the past three years. You know, like the That's vibe true. is not, you know, I agree. The goal is to get that potent. And it seemed like, you know, definitely seemed like we we didn't get there yet. But we still got to kick. Davious White, kick. Matt Milano. Uh, Jordan Poyer, Micah High, uh huh, Mitch have Morris. all missed significant time in the last couple of years. Oh, no, yeah, and you're absolutely the only, right. The only real difference of our team that's like significant difference that, ha- that we haven't had to face recently is the Fundix being gone. It's the only real difference for real. I like it. I mean, hey, I'm with you. I mean, yes, the wide receiver, room. Huge. I, think, I think it's, it's the wide receiver huge, room but... as, a, as, an enti- as an entirety. I think that I mean, they turned it over, you know, Gabe Davis gone. Stefan Diggs gone. Uh, you know what I mean? They kind of they changed over the room. You yeah, know what I mean? Y'all hyping Gabe Davis. I'm, I, I got to oh, no, I, I didn't think that it was I a good draft deal. Matt Collins in the last I mean, round Mac- of my fantasy drafts now because like he might be getting burned. You know, like. But Justice is not going to get here ready and tell us that Mac Collins was in, I mean, is an important guy. Yeah. Deontay Hardy got burned last year. What? <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Not really. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, I, I think I think Matt Collins might get the same burn, burn Deontay Hardy doing. got last season. So that is I mean. Okay. Might okay. Hey, hey listen, we can agree to disagree. And and one thing that Justice said that is correct 
um, is for sure is that we haven't played the game yet. So we have no idea. Um, we are still searching for answers on what Joe Brady um, and his offense is going to look like. This is his first year um, running the offense. Like we talked about before at nauseum, he was running Ken Dorsey's offense or a version of it last year in that second half when he picked up after that Denver game. So we'll see all eyes on the offense and all eyes will be on Josh Allen. He needs to be a leader from the front. I think that we can all agree on that. Um, I, I think that we can all agree on the fact that he is the leader of the team and they do look to him. I think that that, that is clear. Um, they love him and and the players respond to him. And I think that it's um, I think that we all can agree as we close tonight that this is a pivotal year for his legacy. And 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 can we agree? Can we agree on that? No. Nope. OK, Justice. No, nope. correct. Nope. It's a pivotal year for Sean McDermott's legacy. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't. I, I think the, bet, I think I'll, the Goonies love him too much that he's that I can't. I can't do anything to get rid of this. Dude. If, if they say <laughs> this another, year's a disaster, seconds to get rid of him. Like I say, they this love year's him. a disaster. We don't play well. Josh Allen, you know, doesn't play great, and we miss the playoffs this year. Mm -hmm. I'm still not less confident in Josh next year. So, like, yes, it's pivotal, but like. He, I said for his legacy. I said legacy because everybody sure. wants to tell me that he can rise, and you. I mean, Justice just told us that that he's the moon. Yeah. No, that's so, that right. he's the yeah. moon. He just told me that Kansas City Correct. won without, even though they had the number one defense. They won without. If he has season. a shit, like, like if he's great. terrible, then yeah. Not but terrible. if he's like, if he's, he's good to terrible. great, then he'll be fine. Take it to the bank, as they would say. You can take that to the bank. Then if that's he the needs case. more. He needs <laughs> more. I don't. I'm speaking to his legacy. Okay. I think yeah. he'll. I think he'll be better than great. But I'm. I'm just speaking to his legacy. Like if he has a a good year this year where he throws for thirty touchdowns, you know what I mean. Like nothing will happen to his legacy. Okay, he'll still be one of the best quarterbacks. Okay, I like it. I like it. I mean, it, I I think that everybody's watching to see that now that Stephon Diggs is gone. How about that? Can we all agree on that? Everybody is looking to watch yeah, to see sure. how he responds for and sure. how the offense responds. So I think that that. Um, is something that everybody's going to be keeping an eye on across the league because he is now we've got a superstar at QB one. So I really appreciate everybody joining in tonight over 500 people, almost 600 people watching us on all the different platforms. We really appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, listen, justice, our resident J a 17 truther, um, the, the torch bear. We really appreciate you joining us tonight, man. Um, as always, and, and, and sharing some of your time, man. DT, I mean, we got we got smacked up tonight because I mean, Justin says everything. I mean, what are you guys talking about? Everything's fine. No, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens when the season yeah. starts. It may be, and, and it may be. I'd it like, may be. I'd like the overall vibe. I liked it, Justice, tonight because I think the overall vibe needs to be, you know, it was optimism, and then preseason kind of set in with people thought reality a little bit, and there's definitely some negative negativity around, especially circles, you know, I'm in and group chats I'm in, there's negativity mm -hmm. around and going to be a long year. We're just going to have to grin and bear it. So right. I, I like the optimism. I, you know, I'm the optimist guy. I like justice coming in with the optimism. I don't know if I'm as far in as he is on some topics, but you know, I definitely like the optimism there. And I think as a, as a whole, as a fan base, as nickel city and a mafia, we need to move like, okay, like, we still haven't kicked yet, so there's we can be optimistic, but we have to be realistic. But let's let's start getting pumped up and be you know have we do got one seven, so let's let's fucking go. We do have one seven, so it, yes, there are some agree. other factors, but let's buckle in. We got them. I'm not scared of anybody in the league. Let's let's fucking go. We got one seven. I'm, I'm excited. This is going to be the first one so, of the first years in a long that's time. Where I'm at. I'm not just waiting for the playoffs. So I mean, I'm I'll enjoy it. I'm gonna enjoy the season a little bit differently. You're gonna be just waiting for the playoffs. No, 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 not no. I'm I'm I I made my pledge and I'm gonna do my best because and when it's I mean, week eight, I don't even know why it's six, seven, and one, you're gonna be like, all right. Well, if playoffs? we are at week eight and we're seven to one, you need to come back on the show just to be able to glow. Oh, I'm gonna be on the show week four uh, when we be no. I, 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 do. Be like, I, I told you. Yeah, I uh <laughs> wow, that would be amazing. I mean, we got a gauntlet, so that would be amazing with the quarterbacks that we play. So we'll see. As always out there, spread love, not hate. These were my Bills thoughts said out loud. Hit them with a go, Bills, Justice. Hit them with a go, Bills, DT. I appreciate y'all tonight, man. Go, Bills. Go, Bills. <laughs> go, Bills. I love it. I love it. Oh.